To get started, go ahead and select the point negative 2, comma 1. Great, so here's negative 2, comma 1. Now when you translate something, that's a fancy way of saying that you're moving it. So if we were to translate this point, negative 2, comma 1, 2 units to the right and 3 units up, then we would wind up at this point over here, which is 0, comma 4. So now let's start with the point 4, comma 2 over here. If you translate this point 3 units left and 5 units down, then where do you wind up? Select the resulting point. Nicely done. So if you start at 4, comma 2 and you translate this point 3 units left and 5 units down, then the resulting point is 1, comma negative 3. Now suppose we have a few points on a graph. How can we write down the way that we're translating them? Well, suppose we're moving them 3 units to the right. In other words, we're adding 3 to their x coordinates. So after this translation, the generic point x comma y would have an x coordinate of x plus 3. So whatever x equals, after this translation, the x coordinate will be x plus 3. And if we move the points 2 units up, that's the same as adding 2 to their y coordinates. So here's how you can write down a translation that's 3 units right and 2 units up. x comma y is being translated to x plus 3 comma y plus 2. So next, suppose you have the translation x comma y to x plus 4 comma y minus 1. If you apply this translation to the point 3 comma 5, what are the resulting coordinates? Right, so the resulting x coordinate is 3 plus 4, or 7, and the resulting y coordinate is 5 minus 1, or 4. Next, suppose you have the translation x comma y to x minus 2 comma y plus 3. This time, I'm not telling you where you start, but after the translation, you're at the point negative 3 comma 8. So then what were the coordinates of the original point before the translation? Excellent! The original point was negative 1, 5. If you translate this point by subtracting 2 from the x coordinate and adding 3 to the y coordinate, you indeed wind up at negative 3, 8. Next, suppose you perform the translation x, y to x plus 1, y minus 1, and then you perform a second translation x, y to x minus 5, y minus 6. What does this mean? Well, let's pick a starting point, like 2, 4. Now the first translation is adding 1 to the x coordinate and subtracting 1 from the y coordinate, so that's over here. Then the second translation is subtracting 5 from the x coordinate and subtracting 6 from the y coordinate, so now we're over here. So you can think of these two translations as being a single translation. Going from the start to the finish, you had to move 4 units left and then 7 units down. So this translation is x comma y to x minus 4 comma y minus 7. And you might have noticed that to combine these translations, you first added 1 to the x coordinate and then subtracted 5. Adding 1 and subtracting 5 is the same as subtracting 4. And for the y coordinates, subtracting 1 and then 6 is the same as subtracting 7. So now suppose you perform the translation x comma y to x minus 3 comma y plus 2, and then you perform a second translation x comma y to x plus 8 comma y minus 4. Applying these two translations is the same as applying which single translation? Exactly, subtracting 3 from the x coordinate and then adding 8 is the same as adding 5. And adding 2 to the y coordinate and then subtracting 4 is the same as subtracting 2. So if you perform these two translations one after the other, that's the same as translating x comma y to x plus 5 comma y minus 2. Now one more thing, when we say we're translating a shape, that means we're translating every point in the shape. So consider the translation x comma y to x plus 3 comma y plus 2. Suppose we want to apply this translation to this triangle and this ellipse. So we're moving these shapes 3 units right and 2 units up. To do this, it helps to keep track of a few points in the shapes, like the triangle's vertices or the center of the ellipse. So let's move the shapes 3 units right and 2 units up. 
you can see that by translating the shapes, we applied the same translation to each of these points. So if you apply the translation x comma y to x minus 4 comma y minus 3 to the rectangle in the middle of this graph, which rectangle do you get? Exactly, you get the rectangle in the bottom left, and you can check that by applying this translation to any point of the original rectangle, like the vertex in the upper right. If you subtract 4 from the x-coordinate and you subtract 3 from the y-coordinate, then sure enough, you have the upper right vertex of the translated rectangle. To get started, what's the approximate measure of this angle? Right, so this angle measures approximately 135 degrees. One way to think about it is you need to rotate this ray 135 degrees so it lies on top of this ray. Now you can also rotate shapes just like lines and rays. For example, consider this shape here. Let's give it a full 360 degree rotation. We can also rotate it by smaller increments like 45 degrees. If we rotate it another 45 degrees, we have a 90 degree rotation and here's 135 degrees, and here's 180 degrees. So next, take a look at this shape here. Which of these shapes down here are what you get when you rotate this top shape by 90 degrees? Exactly, so this is a 90 degree rotation. If we translate this top shape down here, you can see that a 90 degree rotation will give us this shape. This shape over here represents a 45 degree rotation, while this shape is a 180 degree rotation. So next we'll be looking at rotations on the coordinate plane. To get started, go ahead and select the point 3 comma 4. Great, so here's 3 comma 4. Now when we say we're rotating a point around the origin, or the point 0 comma 0, you can draw a line segment between that point and the origin, and then rotate this line segment around. So for example, if we were to rotate 3 comma 4 90 degrees around the origin, then the line segment would now be over here. So if you rotate 3 comma 4 90 degrees around the origin, the resulting coordinates are negative 4 comma 3. Now if we were to rotate this point another 90 degrees around the origin, so we're rotating it by a total of 180 degrees, it looks like we wind up at this point down here. So what are the resulting coordinates of this rotation? Excellent! So rotating 3 comma 4 by 180 degrees around the origin, you wind up at negative 3 comma negative 4. Now when you rotate a point, you could rotate it this way, which is called the clockwise direction, because that's how the hands of a clock move, or you could rotate it this way, the opposite direction, called counterclockwise. In math, counterclockwise is defined as being a positive rotation, while clockwise is defined as being a negative rotation. So for example, try rotating this point, 2 comma negative 2, by positive 45 degrees around the origin. So keep in mind that a positive rotation means you're going in the counterclockwise direction. Click on the resulting point from this rotation. Excellent! So rotating 2 comma negative 2, positive 45 degrees around the origin, you wind up over here on the x-axis. Next, try rotating the point 5 comma 2 by negative 90 degrees around the origin. So keep in mind that rotating by a negative angle means you're going in the clockwise direction. Nicely done. So if you rotate 5 comma 2 by negative 90 degrees around the origin, you wind up down here at 2 comma negative 5. Let's see if we can find some patterns in 90 degree rotations. So on the coordinate plane, consider the point A comma B. So that means it's A to the right of the Y axis and B up from the X axis. And let's also draw in this triangle here. So if we rotate this point 90 degrees around the origin, then it winds up over here. So now we're a distance B left of the Y axis and a distance A above the X axis. So. If you rotate A comma B by positive 90 degrees around the origin, what are the resulting coordinates? 
Exactly. So if you rotate A comma B by 90 degrees, you wind up at negative B comma A. And this will always be true for any values of A and B. To rotate a point by positive 90 degrees around the origin, you can always swap the x and y coordinates and then multiply the new x coordinate by negative 1. Pretty cool, right? Next, let's rotate our point A comma B by 180 degrees around the origin. So now, what are the resulting coordinates? Exactly, this point has coordinates negative A comma negative B. So whenever you rotate a point by 180 degrees around the origin, you can flip the sign of both the x and y coordinates. Finally, let's rotate this point by negative 90 degrees. Remember, a negative rotation is clockwise, so the resulting point is down here. So what are the coordinates of this point? Nicely done. So after a negative 90 degree rotation, the resulting coordinates are B comma negative A. So for this one, we swapped the X and Y coordinates and then multiplied the new Y coordinate by negative 1. Don't worry about memorizing these different rules for 90 degree rotations around the origin. Your best bet is to draw a little sketch for yourself, like this one. But one thing to remember. Positive rotations are counterclockwise and negative rotations are clockwise.